Hi, in this video, I will talk about regulation of G-protein signaling. Now, here is an overview of G-protein signaling. Now, G-protein signaling could be of different kinds. For example, GS signaling. In GS signaling, the trimary G-protein, the, the alpha subunit of the trimary G-protein get dissociated from the GPCR upon ligand binding and it act, actually activates adenylate cyclase and which leads to cyclic AMP generation and thereby activation of protein kinase A and subsequent trans transcription of genes from the nucleus. Another signaling is GQ signaling which involves phospholipase C and cleavage of PIP2 and it generates IP3. IP3 binds to IP3 receptor on the ER and allow calcium influx from the ER and that activates protein kinase C and thereby subsequent signaling happens. So be it a GQ signaling or a GS signaling, G proteins work like a molecular switches. They have two configurations, an on and an off. In a GDP bound state, they are in an off situation. But from the off situation, guanine nucleotide exchange factors can change their configuration and exchange GTP and th thereby activating them. Now a GTP bound G protein is activated whereas a GTP is activating protein or gaps can switch off these G proteins or switch off the G protein signaling and get them back, hydrolyze the GTP and get them back to a GDP bound inactive state. Now be it a GQ signaling or a GS signaling, RGS is one of the common regulator which, which have a gap activity. Since it has a gap activity or GTP as activator protein like activity, so it can hydrolyze GTP from both G alpha S or G alpha Q signal. G alpha Q modules and thereby terminating the downstream signaling further. Now upon prolonged agonist stimulation or prolonged ligand based stimulation another interesting way of terminating the G protein signaling is receptor internalization. When ligand binds to the GPCR for a long time there are certain kinases which can phosphorylate GPCRs and the phosphorylated GPCR is actually binding site for beta-arestin. Beta-arestin can in turn interact with adapter proteins like AP2 and which bring in clathrin coat assembly. And once clathrin coat is assembled, the GPCR is endocytosed. Now the GPCR endocytosis in a clathrin dependent manner is one of the important ways by which receptor desensitization could occur. Once G protein was internalized, it would form an endosome. In an endosome state, it can stay in the cytosol for minutes to hours. Now it could have two different fates. Either it could be recycled back to the membrane or it could be degraded by fusion with the lysosome. Now not only Clathrin based endocytosis is the mechanism of G protein internalization. It has been also seen that G proteins are associated with lipid rafts. So they are also co localized with cavuli in some of the time. That's why cavuli mediated endocytosis is another mechanism of G protein signaling term termination or receptor desensitization. Now, complexity of the G protein signaling comes from a combinatorial phosphorylation code and it is entirely dependent upon which kinases phosphorylates which residue of the G protein. For example, GRK2 phosphorylated specific serine residues on the GPCR C-terminal domain whereas GRK6 phosphorylates a different set of residues on the C-terminal domain of the GPCR. Now, this different pattern of phosphorylation works like a barcode. Each 
particular pattern of phosphorylation has a specific meaning to it that could be read by specific barcode reader in the cell. For example, beta arrestine can read this kind of differential phosphorylation and depending upon the phosphorylation pattern, it leads to different fate. For example, GRK2 mediated phosphorylation pattern could be read by beta arrestine. As a result, beta arrestine has a scaffolding function which bring which bring AP2 and thereby clathrin mediated endocytosis occurs. Also, in case of GRK6 mediated phosphorylation pattern, when when beta arrestine reads this pat pattern, a very different scenario happens. Then beta arrestine works like a signaling hub. It brings in SRC kinase and thereby SRC kinase interacts with ARC and a MAP kinase signaling cascade occurs. So depending upon this phosphorylation barcode, different sort of regulation could occur. Now another form of long-lasting mechanism by which cheese protein signaling could be terminated is down regulation of the GPCR transcript itself. So since the G GPCR is actually on the surface as at a protein level and it has to be recycled back a new GPCR sh should be formed which would be displayed on the surface. So now after prolonged agonist stimulation in order to reduce the signaling less amount of GPCR could be produced and this kind of phenomena has been reported in mouse olfactory epithelium when mouse, olfac mou mouse olfactory system is stimulated with prolonged odor exposure then most of the cases it has been seen GPCRs are down regulated in an odor and concentration dependent manner so these are the some most common type of regulation that G protein undergoes and thereby G protein mediated signaling could be highly regulated by these kind of mechanisms. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video give it a quick thumbs up. Thank you.